Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Hilton. It is Tuesday, and I wanted to share with you some principles today in our 2020 leadership. And I usually do this around 5.30 in the morning, but I'm uh, moving slower this morning and a lot on my plate today. And uh, hope that you're doing well and that you're up and at it and that you're moving on this great Tuesday. We're a little cold here in Indianapolis. We had snow come in last night, but we are doing better and got a lot of sunshine now finally coming out. So it'll probably melt some of that snow that was on the ground, on the, at least on the, uh, on the grass. So we had quite a bit come in last night. They said about one to three inches. I'm not sure exactly how much came in. I don't believe for us in central Indiana, it was quite three inches, but I think it was less than that. But we made it and everything's good and all is well. And I wanted to share some things with you. First of all, let me say it's good to be back home. Beverly and I had spent the last week with our family in Ohio, uh, connecting again with my mom and daddy and her mom and daddy and got to see them. Plus, we had got to go to uh, Ohio State football game for my wife's birthday because our kids had bought her tickets for uh, the Ohio State game for her birthday. So it was just it was a weekend, uh, just being a week uh, of being together with our family and um, just resetting for a minute and just praying and thanking God for his blessings. Went to church on Sunday in uh, Ohio with my family there and so it was good. It was good. It was real good. And I'm also glad everything went well at Bethel Family Worship Center over the weekend and good reports of people uh, coming to Christ and praying and the church continued to move forward. So I always love to hear that and want to say thank you, everybody, for being uh, at your post and being uh, plugged in. I want to speak this morning on the thought of a son or a hireling. And I want to talk to you about something that is, uh, in my opinion, crucial when it comes to ministry and it comes to uh, generational impartation, what I believe is an apostolic reformation in the kingdom where fathers have are birthing sons. Of course, Malachi, uh, God speaks to us to the prophet Malachi and said that he would send the spirit of Elijah uh, and the hearts of the fathers would be returned to the sons and the sons to the fathers. And as we move into the New Testament, we see that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And we see a connection uh, all throughout scripture of father and sonship. Um, we see fatherhood. We see it in Moses and Joshua. We see it in Paul and Timothy. Uh, we see it in Elijah and Elisha. And when we speak of sonship, we're not necessarily speaking gender specific, rather we're speaking relationship. And so it could be a mother, daughter, father, son. But when we say father, son, it's a principle in the kingdom that sons are born in. And so there's a difference between someone who's born in and someone who's hired in. A son is born in, a hireling is hired in. And there is a difference in the mindset and there's a difference in the way that those two people think. And so I want to talk to you about that. I've been sharing this for uh, this particular concept or principle for many years. And I still believe it to be true. And I've seen its uh, great effects. I've also seen the negativity um, of folks who start out as a son but turn into a hireling and so i want to talk about are you a son or are you a hireling and now remember paul said you have not many fathers and you have ten thousand instructors but you have not many fathers paul was saying that in jewish custom you could hire someone to come in and teach your children and prepare them in the law and prepare them for their bar mitzvah at age 12 and prepare them to uh, be able to quote the, the law. But he said that's a hired person, someone who's an instructor that's paid. And then he said, but you have not many fathers. 
So there's a difference between an instructor or a hireling, someone hired in, and someone who is a true father. Fathers produce sons, and sons um, produce more sons. Sons learn how to be fathers because they themselves are a son first. And this is something that I speak about, not by theory, but by practicum. I live this. I've lived this all my life and didn't even know I was living it until God uh, connected dots and networks in my life that brought revelation on this subject. But I want to talk about that. If you've ever led people, then you've come across people who would rather act the part than to put in the effort needed to discipline themselves to become the leader that God intends them to be. And in my opinion, those people are fakers and they can sometimes masquerade as a son. But if you really look close, you can tell the difference between a son and a hireling. And for a leader, it's important to identify someone who is a hireling that's within the organization or within the ministry or within the church or wherever it is before they disrupt the team's momentum and damage relationships within the group. And when I look at people who are hirelings or fakers, they look the part and they talk the part, but they really fall short of fulfilling the part. Uh, I used to hear them say they have a lot of talky talky, but no walkie walkie. In other words, they promise big, they say big things, they have all these great ideas, but they really lack the discipline in their life to carry out any of those things. And there are ways that you can distinguish between someone who's a real team player and someone who's just posturing themselves for self-advancement. That's the difference between a son and a servant. And I'm going to give you several things to look at this morning. First of all, sons um, have an unselfish mindset. They're unselfish, but a hireling has a selfish mindset. And the, re the difference between the two is that a son will do things that benefit other people. A son will do things that benefit the whole, benefit the organization. But a hireling will only think about benefiting themselves. A hireling is single focused on outcomes and what is to their best interest. So that's the difference between a son and a hireling. A son is unselfish and a hireling is selfish. That's the mindset they carry. The second thing that you can tell the difference between the two is that sons are mission conscious where a hireling is position conscious. And a son will give up a position to achieve the mission, but a hireling will give up a mission just to achieve a position. Now listen, sons, for, for a son, if you are a son, the progress of the mission is more important than your own place within the mission. But for a hireling, they value their position more highly than anything else. They want to be recognized. They want to have a title. They want people to see them in their position and they, will, and they end up leading from a place of position instead of a place of mission. Sons are concerned about the mission where a hireling is more concerned about their position and they'll give up a mission to grab a position anytime and any way they possibly can. So you have to be careful when you have someone who's position hungry, who affirms themselves based upon their position. Jesus said that we must get low, we must serve, we must wash people's feet. That's the difference between a son and a, and a hireling. A hireling's really not interested in washing anyone's feet. They're interested in having their feet washed by other people. And so there's the difference between the two. The third thing about a, the difference between a son and a hireling is not, that a son will deliver the goods while a hireling will make promises that they never keep. You see, a son is a team member and they can be counted on to finish the task every time. They follow through on what they say, but a hireling will claim the ability to do it, but in the end, they do not. They uh, consistently do not follow through with what they say. They're late everywhere they go. They are, are interested in how they appear to other people. They wanna know uh, what people are saying about them. They are interested in their appearance. They put on a good show in front of the right people. They make promises that they don't deliver on. And that's not a son, that's a hireling. 
here's the fourth thing, the difference between a son and a hireling is that sons are what you would call ministry happy or job happy, where a hireling is a job hunter. And so the reason I say that is because sons, they love to do what they do and they do it well and they give their whole heart and for them working is is fulfilled and they're, they're, they're it's meaningful and they're devoted to the responsibilities that they've been entrusted. They're a steward and they walk with excellence. But on the other hand, a hireling is always looking for a greener grass somewhere else. They're constantly on the lookout for a better situation, better pay. Uh, they really don't have no loyalty and they'll break their commitment whenever it helps them to get an ahead or get advancement. And this is where I tell people you have to be careful that you don't prostitute your gift. For an example, um, unfortunately in the, in the ministry and in the kingdom of God, I've seen where people have um, used their influence to steal people from other churches and things. For example, they would say, oh, are they using you over there? If you come over here, I'll put you to use. Well, first of all, pastor, if you are doing that, you are out of order and that's wrong. You never build a church by proselyting and and I've never done that in my entire life because I was taught that that is out of order and that is incorrect. But what happens is if you've got someone who has potential, who has giftings and abilities, and maybe they don't feel like they're really being used maybe there's a reason that they're not being fully used yet. Maybe they're having to sit and be marinated in the fruit of the Spirit so that their gift can be received, but they need fruit development in their life. And if what happens is you have someone come in who's trying to build their church or their kingdom, and they try to steal these people, and, and, if, and if that son is not careful, they'll turn into a hireling, and they'll go over just so they can be used or so they can get a gift um, functioning in their life and they can have an outlet to express themselves. And that's not how you build a church. That's not how you attach yourself to a dream or align yourself to a vision. That is an archaic, old, um, uh, terrible, uh, underhanded way of doing ministry in the kingdom. Uh, now, if you want to do, if you don't want to be in the kingdom, then you can do that. But if you want to be in the kingdom of God, where God's favors on your life, then you stay up under and you're submitted. And so a son is happy about where they serve. They serve wherever and whenever is needed. But a hireling is always just on the lookout for what pays the most and where's a better position. What makes me look more prominent? Are they going to give me a title? And so there's a difference between being job happy and being a job hunter. And here's, here's the fifth thing between a son and a hireling. Sons love to see other people succeed, but a hireling is not interested in other people. They're interested in their own success. A son considers purpose like this. The purpose of life is not to win. The purpose of life is to grow and to share. And when you come to look back on all that you have done in, in life, you're going to get the greatest satisfaction from the pleasure you have brought to the people's lives that have been surrounding you. In my opinion, it's going to be from the times that you lifted people and encouraged people. And I think I think we all start out, especially as young people, we start out as a competitor. But the goal is to grow past the competing mindset where we're competing against folks, uh, where we're now completing folks, not competing, but completing. And in my adult life, I, I found that I've evolved from being just a competitor to now a personal achiever, to be a team, not just to be a team player, but to go on to be a team builder. And, and that's important that you come to places where you evolve and being a son. A son is happy when another member of the team succeeds because it benefits everyone. Everyone is blessed and benefited, but a hireling, they see success as a win-lose proposition and they resent when another person wins because if another person wins, they feel like they've lost something and they don't give out compliments to anyone else. They don't encourage anyone else because to them, if someone else wins, it's a loss to them. And that's one of the ways you can tell if someone is a son or a hireling. 
if they're a son, they're interested in seeing other people succeed. But if they're a hireling, they only are interested in seeing themselves succeed. Here's the sixth thing. Sons have integrity and they value integrity, but a hireling values image. And when you think about it in terms of uh, navigation, in navigation, the rule is that whatever is under the surface should be heavier than what is above the surface. And, and we know that to be true um, in, in the case of a ship that's on the water. The ship will capsize in a storm if what's above it is heavier than what's beneath it. And integrity is a lot like that. What's under the surface has to be greater than what's in view of everyone. A sun can be counted on to do the right thing even if no one is looking. That's integrity. It's something that's within them. They, their word is their bond. Their yay is yay and their nay is nay. They're willing to sit up under and be submitted even in times of correction, in times of instruction. Rather than needing even explanation, they simply do what they're asked to do and they carry it through to the letter. A son who has integrity can be counted on to walk in integrity even if no one is looking. But a hireling, you know, really doesn't do the right thing. They only do the right thing when they're being watched and people are expecting of them to put on a show. They do um, whatever they want to do, when they want to do it, and they put on a show for whoever's watching at that moment. But then um, when it's just the basics and they're supposed to be faithful and they're supposed to be counted on, they're a no-show. They got every excuse that you can imagine. And so again, it goes back to appearance rather than character. Uh, they wanna be seen and they will show up when it's time to be seen, but when it's uh, not a big fanfare, they are a no-show and a very frustration to the regular folks that are always there serving. Hirelings won't admit fault when they make a mistake. They'll blame someone else for their problem. Instead of taking ownership personally for what they've done and the pattern they've developed, they will blame someone else. They'll blame their boss, they'll blame their pastor, they'll blame their spouse, they'll blame their upbringing, they'll blame situations because to them, it, they're never wrong. And so there is a vast difference between a son and a hireling when it comes to integrity and what you value. Here's the seventh thing. Sons make hard choices, but a hireling makes easy choices. With a hard choice, the price is paid on the front end. When you make a hard choice, you have to pay up front, and the payoff only comes later. And so when you make choices like that, those choices usually come with a risk, and they involve sacrifice, and they involve time, and they involve planning, and it places the ministry and the organization and the business above themselves. They take a risk for the whole. Uh, Peter Drucker said something one time. He said, whenever you see a successful business person, uh, then you're seeing someone who's made a courageous decision. They do something on the front end. They make a risk, pay a price. Sons are not afraid to make those decisions. They make hard choices for the benefit of other people. Pastor Bev and I have been serving in ministry at Bethel Family Worship Center for 20 years. And I'm gonna tell you, we have made personal risks, decisions for the benefit of the church. There were times we went for years without um, any pay increase. Uh, we made sacrifice after sacrifice. And I'm not saying this to toot our own horn or get empathy. I'm just saying we knew in our heart that we had to make sacrifices for the whole. We had to drill down and commit ourselves that we were going to stick with it uh, when people walked away, when people lied on us, when people uh, who had never have never seen um, or walked in leadership on this level. And it's not even a great level, but in my opinion, just you know, when you're raised in environments, people have their idea of what they think a level is. But you 
you never had to hire anybody, never had to fire anybody, never had to um, deal with content contention, uh, never had to deal with a million dollar budgets, but yet they seem to know everything. Uh, and I'm going to tell you something until you've walked in someone's shoes, you don't know. Uh, you are pastoring no one. <laughs> and it's interesting the people who have the most to complain about do the least. Uh, they complain, they don't have, but they've never done anything um, noteworthy. And I don't mean that to be rude or disrespectful, but I want you to understand we made a decision early on that we were going to live for God and that we were going to run for God. That didn't make us a perfect leader by any means. But I tell you what, we paid the price and we have paid the price on the front end of doing what's right and keeping our integrity. And I'm going to tell you something. If you'll walk in integrity, your integrity will walk for you. God will vindicate you. And all you have to do is look around and see even the people in your life who have uh, railed against you, were uh, said things that weren't true. Look at their life, and one by one, you see where uh, God has taken care of what of them. And I'm not a believer that God's going to get people, but I am a believer that if you sow it, you will reap it. You may not reap it now, but you'll reap it somewhere. If you cause a mess for someone, you might as well go ahead and write it in the books. A mess is coming your way at some point. And so I just believe that you walk with integrity and God will help you when you make those hard choices. A hireling will make an easy choice. Here's number eight. Sons finish well, but hirelings fade out. A son finishes well, but a hireling fades out. You know, some people start as a son, but at some point they turn into a hireling. And I don't understand and I don't know necessarily why that happens. I do believe that they maybe overestimate um, the process of what it takes to remain a son and to stick with this principle of reproducing people in the faith and helping people to walk worthy of their calling and walk with integrity, that their yay is yay and their nay is nay. I don't mean that anyone's perfect, but you teach people to stick it out and to stay the course and not just to, to just yield to any old thing that comes and presents itself that would pull you away from the lofty place of being a son in the kingdom. You know, somehow they make the choice to begin, but they get tired of the work and maybe they get tired of continuing the course or they begin to proceed until they're confronted with the need to change. And when God sends people and fathers in your life, pastors and fathers who begin to speak into your life and begin to tell you, you need to make these changes. You, you know, you're not seeing success because this is an area that is off. And, and, and rather than cling to that advice and that counsel, they don't want to change. And so they're unwilling to adjust and they begin pretending in order just to get by. And they shift inside from being a son to a hireling. But on the other hand, a son takes the task to completion. In other words, they will say, you know, God, whatever it is you want to do in me, do it. Do it in me so you can do it through me. And I really believe that God is raising up sons in the kingdom. And we're going to deal with hirelings along the way. But I ask you, do you have a better idea today of who is a son or a hireling within your team? or within the organization you lead? Do you have an idea by hearing this of maybe that person is not thinking like a son, they're thinking like a hireling. Remember that sons will always add to the team's effort, but a hireling, at least in the long run, will cost the team. And you have to know the difference between the two because the counting on the right one is vital to your life and to your ministry. And I would just encourage you today to always remain a son, stay up under a father, stay accountable, and, and be willing to sit in a place where God can just promote you and get glory out of your life on whatever level that he has called you to. But always remember, what goes around comes around. And if you sow a seed uh, into someone else's life that is a seed of dishonor, uh, then dishonor will come to you. No matter how anointed you think you are, no matter how many people uh, like you and how many uh, doors that appear to be opening, 
you can push anything open. Um, I mean, I've known people who have sat and talked about people and talked about leaders who and run them down, who are now yoked up with those same people because they can get something from them. But those people don't know what I've heard out of their mouth. And I'm telling you, you got to be careful what you entertain. You got to be careful how you carry yourself because there's a big bite at the end of that. And so just remain humble, walk worthy of your calling, stay submitted and stay in a place where the Lord can just keep pressing your heart and keep doing something in you. And I've said it for years and I said it again in, in this teaching, God wants to do a work in you so he can do a work through you. And when that happens, blessing is going to come uh, and you'll see the results of that. I just encourage you today to be a son, not a hireling. You were born in, not hired in. And hireling will only stay as long as there's a paycheck. But a son will stay because they're about to inherit the whole house. I speak blessing over you today, and I pray that you will walk worthy of the calling God's called you to. God bless.